Hey guys, welcome to today's episode of the Joy Podcast. This is the recap episode. Um, we're going to deep dive into what episode four looked like, our thoughts, everything that came up and came out. And I'm not doing it alone. I'll start with my co-host on my extreme right. Your husband. Yeah. Your baby daddy. <laughs> baby daddy. Uh, uh, <laughs> my name is Ben Psycho. Make sure you subscribe. We're doing 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year. I'm at Funge Ikitu. <laughs> I think now I think now we need to start threatening people, you know. Uh, to Rudy next time. Yeah, make sure you subscribe. <laughs> yeah. I'm so happy to be back here doing the recap episode. Now today's episode is also special because it's uh sponsored by HMD, uh, which is human mobile devices. Uh these amazing phones. And we have one to give away actually. Yeah. So we're gonna be showing it to you on the screen right now. It looks amazingly slick with 50 megapixels on the front camera. On the selfie camera. Imagine, Imagine. that. Umezoya 50 megapixels on the back. On the back. Camera. I actually thought it's the back yeah. the first time, but I checked closely. It's the selfie camera. has 50 megapixels and it's a budget-friendly phone. So make sure you check them out. And we have one to give away. So you better stick to the Jared podcast page. You yeah. might just walk away. Mm. <laughs> that might come to an end very, you come very soon. Where we Thanks to HMD. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So I think, as Ben has said, keep your eyes peeled on that giveaway. We are so excited to be giving away one HMD phone mm -hmm. to one lucky Joy Rider. And today we are not alone on set. We are joined by one of the participants of the Love on the Joyride show. Mm -hmm. And that is Mr. Ted. He's the one Anafungua Sakafu yeah, on the recap. You know, you How are know. you, Ted? I'm good. Have you been? Happy to be here. I've been very good. Uh -huh. And I've also been taking my gym journey seriously, so... Really? You know, oh, really? Yeah, yeah I've, I've started gym in my cardio. Unanza gym na cardio? So, I'm going to have a gym in my car. Oh, I'm going to show. Yeah, I'm going to the gym. We find it serious. Oh, that's what triggered? Yeah, yeah. I oh, can see myself. Yeah. Yeah. Love to see it. To go, yeah. How is it so far? It's good. The gym. A lot mm -hmm. of sweating. Yeah. But I really like the feeling, the endorphins. It's, it's a yeah. nice feeling, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But Plus, for me... You told me girls are recognizing you now, you know, they're like, hey, hey, the know, ladies. I, saw you, I saw you on this I'm show. You want to put me problems, yeah. guys. Hey. But I think we can get into that. But before mm -hmm. that, I want to read a few comments from um, episode three. Mm -hmm. And because Ted is here, I'll try to read comments that have a little bit of Ted wow. and mm -hmm. a little bit of everyone. So, so you want to read the comments that have a little bit of drama? Yeah. Okay. okay. You know, when you think like Sam, that's when you know you're not ready for any commitment. <laughs> Even that... That one, he's talking about children. He has a long way to go. Also, this discussion is an epitome of how we th how the thinking changes gradually when you're actually in it. At first, they were just answering, then thinking deeper. And as people give their opinions, the shift is apparent. Ted, on the other hand, is ready for marriage. Yeah. Ted, are you ready for marriage? I, I think you'll see that on the podcast. I say several times, I'm getting married at 45. So, yeah. How old are you now? 44. No, I'm joking. I'm 29. I'm 29. Okay. 29. Yeah. So that's 15 years from now. 15 years. No, 16. 16 years. Yeah. You want to date someone's daughter for 16 years? See. So that means <laughs> you. Hey, okay, it okay. can change. It can change. Okay. But what, what can accelerate that change? What can make it like maybe two months from 16 years to two months? Stability. Financial? For you? In all forms mental, financial, emotional, mm. physical. Yote, just making sure everything is stable before. We're going to come back to that. Mm -hmm. um, another comment is not Ted saying Mapens in time when he's been single for 12 years. Oh, okay. You know, that came up a lot. I the did. The fact that you've been single did. for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And guys, I just want to clarify for the last time because clearly you guys didn't watch the full part. I said official relationship, girlfriend and boyfriend mm -hmm. relationship. I've had my fair share of flings, situationships. 
But for 12 yeah. years, it's just been flings and situationships. Like for 12 years? You Not for 12 years. That's a thing. So I told you that once that relationship ended in 2012, now I was in the wilderness. Like I had no, I was not dating anyone. Oh yeah, anyone, you disconnected. No, thing, no nothing. Then around 2020 is when I got back in the game. That's still eight years. No, that's four, four years. Four years since COVID. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh. He said from 2012, he got, he was in the wilderness all mm. the way until 2020. Yeah. Mm. So you were, that, that means you were single for eight years. Yes, yes. In this Nairobi. In fact, you've been traveling. I wasn't in Nairobi. I was oh, in you, you were traveling? I was in Korea, yeah. I, was study, I studied in Rome. Oh, what, So what? I was there from 2015 mm. to the end of 2019. What did you study? I was studying economics. I was doing engineering first, but I switched because oh. I hated it. And so I did economics. I did economics. All in Rome. Finance you, changed, well. you changed from uh, engineering to economics in Rome. Yeah, I did uh, in the same uni. I just switched mm. faculties. That's like interesting. Mm-hmm. I've never heard of anyone going and you, to which, which, which Nini did you do? Which engineering? Oh, no, I did Econom- economics. Oh, you did economics. Yeah. And finance. In, in, in Loam. That's, <laughs> the, that's, that's, the, that's the type of soil in KU. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. um, Someone is saying, and it's a fact that you laughed so loudly. Mm-hmm. Zanisha and Ted, perfect match. Ted, what do you think? I, you know, Zanita and I had, uh, like, our answers, I, I feel like we both approached our answers critically like we thought we thought deep and we were, i feel like we we're both very honest so in another life is a joy you never know are you still in touch i know we wrapped shooting oh yeah no we definitely still talk okay yeah how often so say you know um you know every once in a while just checking out but we are supp- like the whole group we are supposed to link have you guys met like for coffee you and zanita I, not yet. Okay. Not, not yet. yet. But it's Soon. in the works. Okay. Oh, it's in the works. Um, there's a comment here. Sam is, I think this will be the last one. And mm. I, why I'm reading this comment is because it comes up in the episode mm. that we're going to be recapping. Sam is childish. He has a fake persona on camera, probably chasing clout. But when he gets into a relationship, he'll probably be very vulnerable. In your experience with Sam, is he chasing clout? Is he being fake? I have a feeling he's not a hundred percent who he is on set. I think I think the way I th- it's very hard for someone to be that closed off. I don't. Mm-hmm. It's not healthy at all. I think it's part of a persona, personally. So you think he's masking something? I think he's masking. Something. So you're saying Loki? He's chasing clout? Ah, uh, no. I would. I don't necessarily think it's a clout thing. I just think. He- he wants to. because chasing clout is definitely just pushing the boundaries. Mm. Even if you don't believe in the thing that you are believing in, mm-hmm. for the sake of reaction from the audience, I think to an extent he mm. is who he was, mm. but I don't think it's a hundred percent. Maybe like a sixty of yeah. that. Yeah, but I wouldn't say it's chasing clout. Okay. Yeah. All right, so then maybe we can get into today's episode. Thank you so much to everyone who's been sending their feedback. We truly do appreciate all of you who've been watching Love on the Jury, on the Premiere Gang. You're shipping these relationships. Um, it's been so interesting to see your feedback, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, this was a totally new concept and we didn't ex- know how people are going to receive it. You guys have been receiving it very well. But we expect, um, we just hope that the show keeps growing even more and more. Yeah. So, Ted, how has your life changed since you came to the show? Uh, a lot of 2012 comments, that's for sure. Oh, really? And but that was giving red flag. Do you see where people were coming from when they would say... Like, if you were to meet a lady today and she, she told you that she's not dated anyone since 2012. I know, that would be, I'd ask questions. But me, I'm very honest. I said I was, I was you were a very damaged self. person. Yeah. Let me just say, I was damaged. Yeah, so I, I was go, I was going through a lot. Yeah, children have been helped. Plus, I was scared. My confidence was not. Msiyoni mm. uted wasaim kavani. Those those people who are with me in Rome can tell you ni likuwa likuwa mblina. How long were you in Rome for? Four and a half years. Four and a half years. That's yeah. from twenty one. But even before, because mm. see what happened is when I le- I w- in high school I was a homebody. Like it was homeschool, homeschool. So I didn't really have a social life. So then I went when I left high school. What like do you I, mean? Ho- that's like that's the schooling. I was in weekly boarding. So like Saturday, like Saturday, you go home. Sunday, you come back. Well, mm. That's the life we all dreamt <laughs> yeah. of in Upper Hill. So, <laughs> so because of that, it was homeschool, homeschool, homeschool. Then I finished high school. I was in flying school for a bit, but I didn't finish. And then I kind of went into a depressive period for about a year and a half, then I went to Rome. But because I hadn't dealt with what I was going through, yeah. I I was not in the best 
space to take advantage of the opportunity I was given. Mm. Mm. So yeah, if I could redo it again, I would knowing now what I knowing then what I know now. Mm. Yeah. So you did flying school, you did engineering, mm. then you finished off with economics. Yes. Brav. It's because flying school was my passion. Okay. Oh, but really? it was, that was all I wanted to. Like I knew I want to Nikki Peter to EV. What messed me up is KQ used to do that ab initial thing, like where Kimaliza Shule, you just go, you apply, so they take you to South Africa, they pay everything, and then you pay back as you're working for them. But the year I finished is when they changed to at you have to have a degree before mm. you can apply. So mm. you see that messed it because I was gonna straight oh. after high school, I was gonna go. So Ted, one of the questions that came up in the episode is how many ladies have you led on in your single days? Ooh. And I wanna bring up, I don't know, Ben, if you remember like when the episode, when we were sharing bios mm. of our contestants and introducing the participants to the audience. Mm. Yeah, do we, uh, do we, do we turn on the we, we have to address the <laughs> elephant in the room. Yeah, that was the biggest elephant yes. in the room. Um, then maybe you can tell people what you saw when Ted was the one who was introduced. So here we are as joyriders. Um, we, we are like, you know what? We're changing the world. Let's let's introduce our contestants mm-hmm. to the world. Mm-hmm. So we do it peacefully. Like, hey, this is Samuel. This is uh, Ocampo. This is Comfort. This is Comfort. This is Zanita. And everybody's like, yo, this looks here. This one looks cool. This one looks cool. Then we, we're like, this is Ted. Then the comment section is like, hey, si uni wangu. Si uni wangu. Si uni wangu. Si uni Si uni wanani. Nana sema ako single for 12 years. On a dating show. In fact, they went, they went, they went on further to tag the person. <laughs> yeah. Like, see, this is your boyfriend, you know? And we're just like, Jared, we're not used to so much fire. Yeah. But this is, this is nice. What's been happening? Because we talked about on the episode leading on people in your single days. Mm. What was happening then? Do you want to talk about it? You no, know, like all the ladies, like all the ladies wanted you, bruv. It's like maybe you're I, part I can, of the Italian I can mafia. cover it surface level. Okay, sure. So I was in a situation ship okay. before you came to the show. Yes, that I hadn't defined. Okay. For how long? One zero. Okay, is this something you? Una taka. How long will it such? Like, it's not such a secret. Let me just say long. Okay. Long. Two years. Uh, let's see, like. Two years, we back shave you one of us. Let's see, let's see. see. Yeah. Let's see. Eight months. Okay. Ah, two months. Come on. You can't. I eight said eight. Months. Eight months. Or eight months. Yeah. Eight okay. months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was never really defined okay. because I was not in, the place. in a space for commitment. Okay. That's fair. So, did you tell her you're coming to the show? I was keeping the whole show thing in Yamaji to most people, not just mm-hmm. her. But so Pierre, like, so Pierre Leona could subscribe. I think so. I think so. Actually, it's so, half. Ted, how, so honestly, now in yes, hindsight, yes. how many people have you led on in your single days? Define what led on means, because I will be honest. Yes. Are situationships leading people on? That's the thing. Are they? That's what we have to define. Because situation. No, leading on. Leading on is very simple. You're giving this other person the impression that uh, they stand a chance to be your partner. And so they also start building castles in the air, mm-hmm. maybe also shut off a few advances from other people here and there. Yeah, they put all their eggs mm-hmm. in your basket. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kumbe, you, you are, your eggs in Rome. I think, okay, I'll be honest, you know, when, when that happened, because from, let's say, 2022, the beginning of 2022 to about mid-23, mm-hmm. I was going through this kind of hedonistic phase where I was just enjoying the moment. I was like, you know, just... What's that? Move wild. Explain to Ben what he- hedonism is. Hedonism is the pursuit of, let's say, pleasure above all else. Oh, really? Yeah. So kind of not thinking twice about just, you know, having fun, moving wild. Yeah, so... You put your happiness first. I put my happiness first, and so I. You face in it, but there's a fancier name. Uh, <laughs> I don't need steak. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh-huh. I was, I was, I was. Even when I was getting in to think to people, I knew it was just for fun, mm-hmm. and that's why I wouldn't define it. I just let's say, okay, my bad in not defining it, but I just wouldn't 
talk about that aspect. Yeah. We're just we're having fun. We're nining. We're we're doing our thing, but the topic of seriousness doesn't come up. Mm. So, and if it does, or oh, it never did, you d- you kind of. You know, wiggle your way out of it. You can kind of wiggle your way out of it, mm. yeah. Which, obviously, in hindsight, is not the best way, which is, I think it's because I'm avoidant. Mm. I'm anxious avoidant. So if I'm through a lot of big words. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so I, if I know a situation will be very stressful, I'll just kind of put it to the side. It's still stressing me out. I'm still thinking about it, but I've pushed it to the side. So I'll cross that bridge when you get there. Mm. But when you're approaching the bridge... Mm. Mm. So yeah, so that's why. So in hindsight, I not I, the smartest way to deal with. Not it. the smartest way to. It's very unfair because yeah. the real feelings you're dealing with, and so it's there's a lot of situations I need to rectify and just be a man and straight up own up. You know, then you deal with it after you've at least. Has being on the show in mm. retrospect made you want to maybe be more? forward about it so maybe if it was you, you found yourself in a situation ship like that mm-hmm. again has it made you feel like okay i need to own my mess and own my feelings if i'm not feeling you i'll tell you straight up the show helped but also at the start of the year mm-hmm. i had told myself that this time if i want to be intentional like if i find myself in a situation I won't just treat it like a situation ship. Mm. I want to be more intentional with it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And not be afraid of commitment. Don't think, ah, oh, but what if... Because, you know, another thing is I used to think that thing of you get together with someone, but you're thinking, now if I invest all this money and then we break up, or am I putting pressure on myself? Does this mean I have to marry this person? Mm. No. But what you need to just do is be in the present mm. and, you know, enjoy. With, else. Yeah. And then as time happens, you mm. work towards... Ted, you seem... Um, you seem a bit uh, self-aware. You seem like you know your yourself. Mm-hmm. It's like even when you're not in the best of space, mm-hmm. it's like you know that about mm-hmm. yourself. That's why you have this hedonist. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other one was antag. What the other one was antagonist? Uh, anxious avoidant. Anxious no, avoidant. No, there's the other one. Religion thing. Yeah. What is uh, it? Agnostic. Agnostic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Agnostic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was, you know, you. It's like you are aware of all these things. Mm-hmm. And it's one of the reasons why I've also seen a lot of women say that, you know, they, they would like Ted, Ted, mm-hmm. Ted. Uh, however, when it came to the guys, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of guys felt like that's too soft. Mm-hmm. That's being too soft and all that stuff. That's where Ocampo was coming from. Mm-hmm. That's where Sam was, was, was coming from. Mm-hmm. And, and, and to be honest, that's a reflection of the bigger perception of how men view this mm-hmm. uh, self-awareness, mm-hmm. yeah. being self-reflective kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Where does that, where, where, what, what would you say about that? And even on the self-aware part is that he knows his vices as well. He yeah. knows like, I'm not good at this. I struggle with this. Mm. Mm. These are my red flags. Mm. Does Very that red be, flags. In fact, the, the, the question was when Sam was asked on the, you know, the, the, the solo shot. The confessionals. The confessionals. <laughs> the, confessionals. <laughs> the confessionals. Sam say that Ted is a bit too feminine. Mm. And that's the the thing that I also get with mm. a lot of men who mm. when when this thing for therapy being too self-aware is seen as too feminine mm-hmm. of a kind of a thing. Yeah. What do you think mm-hmm. about that? In such kind of perception? I think I've I'm not ashamed of it at all. I think one of the most powerful tools a person can have is be self-aware. At the, for the most part, be honest with yourself. Okay, yeah. I'm not saying lie to others, but first and foremost you have to be honest with yourself and that's what I try to do, even though I may not necessarily act out the way I should. Yeah. But I know, I, I know I'm on the wrong when I'm on the wrong. So that's what I want to now do. Not just do that, but project that and mm. be, hey, mm. call, my, call myself out to the people I've wronged. Mm. Which I do sometimes. It's just that the really difficult ones are the ones which maybe I may avoid. They were tricky. But even when I did therapy... Mm. Shout out to therapy. Therapy is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the therapist did say, like, yeah, you, you seem quite self-aware, which mm. I'm not trying to toot. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, they did say. Cause you go to therapy with your glasses? Yeah, do you, like, remove them? That time I didn't have them. Okay. Because that was before the whole eye sen- the light sensitivity thing. Mm. But now if I... I told you, easy. By the way, you guys have been asking me in the comments, yes. The only time I move them is when I shower, and that's not a joke. <laughs> and if you get the water ones, then the, that's... The, uh, the key, but the goggles, it's you have finished. It. Yeah. But uh, as you are saying, I th- I've always been also very in touch with my feelings. And 
it used to bring a lot of problems. You know, like when you're in a boys' school, because I was in a boys' school for a lot from the second half of primary and high school as well, and then for all of high what school. What are the boys saying? So you know me, I've always been a bit of a crier. I'm not afraid to cry. Mm. So obviously, you cry know, in high school. If if I'm in a stressful situation, stuff, yes, I'd cry. And so obviously, you know, the guys are like, oh, <laughs> this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. so I'd never really cared about that because <laughs> growing up, I grew up around a lot of female. Aunt, yeah, I think you mentioned yeah, that. I yeah, I mentioned that. So for me, I was I'm easy with my feelings. I won't lie. Sometimes I do question my masculinity because I'm like, you know, you know, sometimes you wanna be that, but then you're like, so what? So what? You just be true to yourself. You be there for the people you care about and them, they'll accept you how you are. So I'm not a traditionalist. I believe every situation should be handled. Not not in terms of, oh, because he's a man, this and he need should be a conversation, a dynamic. So mm. it didn't bother you at all when Kina Ocampo, because I remember there's a mm. running joke, Ben, and I laugh about all the time. Mm. <laughs> when Sam was saying that to you, for you, it's your wife who's, you're the one who's going, to, the one who's going to be submissive. Submissive. <laughs> Sam is out of pocket. Sam I mean, Sam needs to be arrested. Better. Sam needs better. to be arrested. <laughs> so it doesn't bother you? No, it's a that's dynamic. Great. There are times I'll be dominant. There are times she may take charge of something that's nini, but it's not, yeah, it's not an issue for me. At 45. At 70, Sasa. Many a kashida. Okay. It's going to take longer now. So, Ted, are you in a situationship right now? Hey, Ben. Jackie, ben. Huh? What? Ben. Good job. No, I'm, okay. I'm, just ben. Job. I'm just a good journalist. The rent was due. <laughs> are you rent was due. Are you in a situation right now, Ted? You're to don't get a candle. No, no, I mean, what's there to hide? Nobody knows who it is. Maybe if it's like your talking stages, five people, and they all don't know it's uh, all of them. Mm, yeah. You are? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. does Zanita stand a chance? Yeah. Hey, am I allowed to do that? Yeah. It's it's like for the joy. Joy. Let me tell you, everyone, everyone else will go through this process. Yes, so everyone will I mean, be grilled just, like this. Just sit on the grilling uh, pan. Had I not been in a situation? Mm. By the way, is this situation not a relationship? Yeah, that's also a good question. Rent is due and zero. Yeah. These guys. <laughs> baby's been, coming. Uh, yeah, baby's trap coming. Baby. This is entrapment. <laughs> Diapers. Uh, we next. need to buy them. So uh, why is this situation uh, not a relationship? Because uh, I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working towards. Okay. Yeah. Oh, towards. it's you're working towards the relationship. Yes. Wow, Ted, okay. that's great. Okay. I can you like, podcast. No, Guy, you're please, working towards it, and that's all and that's all that matters. Before, that? I, before I give no, the green don't light. cast this episode. But before I give the green light. <laughs> no, okay, find okay. the green light right now. Yeah. Text after this. Okay. But we're so happy for you. Okay. Um, thank you so much for coming on. I think something else in this episode. Something else that came out strongly with episode, I think episode four, was the issue of roles. Mm-hmm. Is that the one? Yeah. yeah. The issue of roles where it became a bit difficult, uh, weird or, or different. Confusing. Confusing because the ladies were saying they would never get married to a guy who's not financially stable. Mm-hmm. And it, I think it's all of them. Maybe Faith mm-hmm. is the only one who was a bit 50-50 that she might support somebody. Actually, mm-hmm. Comfort was saying, sorry, darling. Mm-hmm. Comfort was saying that it, she will never marry. Somebody who, who earns less, less than her. Yeah. It's impossible for comfort to do that. So okay? unless you you're in the situation, you're in the relationship, and then now maybe something happens because mm. things happen all the time. Yeah. So that she would understand, but she would prefer mm. if the guy is always earning more than. What, what what's your take on that? First of all, the issue of the, the ladies just wanted financially stable. Guy. I think it's not a ridiculous thing to say. I think when you get by the time you're getting into marriage, you should both be stable mm. in all aspects. No, for the ladies, it was not both. Mm-hmm. It was the ladies can be struggling, uh, but the guy cannot mm-hmm. be struggling. I believe it should be both. Both of them both, struggling. You're both participants in this marriage, so you should both be financially stable mm-hmm. and yeah. Oh, so it can't be at the guy is stable and all that stuff, and the lady is struggling, and you come support her. Like, would you? Would you? Is marry? there an is there an end end goal? Like, are they working towards something? The the human end goal is to get out of poverty. It's everyone's okay. end goal. But let me ask mm-hmm. you, Ted, would you date, would you marry uh, somebody who's not financially stable? If I was. If you have financial stable. If I am. Yeah. If I am, I, I, I think I would. 
Okay. Enough, like I'm financially stable enough that to handle another human yes. being. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can afford yeah. Rome here and there. Yeah. <laughs> would you, Would you marry somebody? By the way, let me tell you. You know, Rome is not even expensive. <laughs> How much are you Five k. Five k return. In terms of, because they have these things where you can. There's some documentation you can give. And it's you get it's kind of like a scholarship, but not really. Mm. So there were years where I was, my school fees for the whole year for the whole year mm. was how much was it again? Like one sixty euros. One sixty euros. That's how much. That's oh, like thirty. Sixteen Gs. Back then, back when oh, I was, that was, there, it was like about twenty Gs. Wow. Yeah. So Same it's same amount Rome as, as Lom University as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the beauty is also Rome is not expensive. To live in okay but gonna stress the nairobi too the same stresses you find here mm-hmm. the same stresses out so just think of a nairobi with white people and a metro okay i think yeah. also one of the things that came out was the issue of compensation mm-hmm. um after your wife has gone into delivery why are you then, hinting <laughs> timely <laughs> yeah you know, i was so passionate <laughs> about that conversation it was happening but i couldn't <laughs> say anything <laughs> um and i think it was interesting to see the guys especially Sam and Ocampo mm-hmm. were very those two friends they were very up in arms like they would never compensate like give you financial transaction if i'm not wrong right mm-hmm. they wouldn't give you finances I think, yeah I think that's yeah the um what is your take on that even hearing what the different people had to say i remember saying what i was what we were trying because i remember there was a lot of uh, back and forth argument yeah. that cuz what people wanted to define what exactly do you mean by compensation, compensation. is it money is it that you're paying them is it what 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 yeah. I think. or exposure me i th- <laughs> i think was while your wife is pregnant or post nini you should definitely be supporting her in some way mm. she i guess she she's the one who best knows which way she wants you to support her yeah. so she'll let you know be it financial be it it's something you will discuss mm. the two of you would you yeah. be open to giving financial compensation would you by compen- the compensation part is what i don't understand in terms of i will Whatever I need to pay like for, money, know, you know, for cheng cheng. Who knows oh. hedonistic cheng cheng and cheng. What, as in una- agnostic, una- all of a sudden. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Or do you mean like you're taking any, any need? So to even if or... she takes like uh, pay, mm-hmm. like her, her pay is affected. Maybe mm-hmm. because she wants to take longer maternity mm-hmm. leave, mm-hmm. or she has a business and then mm-hmm. loss of income because she has to stop mm-hmm. working to take care of the home. Would you? Oh yeah, that step in and yeah, help and out give with that. her the money actually, not pay for the bills, mm-hmm. but actually, okay, this is the, your lost income. Here you go. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. okay. Yeah. Cool stuff. Mm. Yeah, I think we can do a bit of stories now. Mm-hmm. Um, you see, Ted, it wasn't that hard. Hey, you are saying that because it's not he's going to deal with. <laughs> oh, you're gonna deal with drama. <laughs> Ted, yes. on your on your on your mess. But you know what? I own my mess. Nice one. Yeah, you know, move from move that those situationships to relationships, and you would be struggling. So a lot of you guys have said that we shouldn't kill Jared's stories. Um, mm. We are not gonna kill them, and so we're gonna be doing them as we do this recap episode. So these episodes, we're just recapping what the previous Love on the Jared episode looked like. Uh, you guys, I'm sure you've you've noticed the change in all the the, the editing and all that stuff. That's some good stuff. Mm-hmm. Now we're gonna do a, a, at least four stories. Yeah. Now in the four stories, uh, Ted, you're gonna chime in. Oh. Doctor Love, you can Happy give. To. In fact, now you're an international traveler. You can give us perspective <laughs> yeah. from all angles. Shiro, let's go. Can I read this for you guys? I don't Please. have my glasses. Okay, so hey, so there's this guy. We're in the same church. Mm-hmm. I'm 18 and he is 24. Mm-hmm. I've known him from September. Is that does that qualify for older guy? Yeah, that's I not think. bad. Okay, the the chick the is 18. Difference. Yeah. Okay. I would assume, years, I'm assuming, yeah. Years. Uh, I've known him from September, but we were just acquaintances. So come beginning of April, he approached me and we've been talking and I thought he was a one because he was almost, he has almost all qualities I've been asking for. Lakini mungu ni nani. I prayed for God to show me if he's the one. And apparently this guy just decided to ghost me after chilling together on Friday. P.S. He didn't even ask me come and ilifika po a home. So on Sunday we met and we didn't talk much. And where that feeling when you see him... W- that feeling you have when seeing him laughing with other girls. So I decided to text him that Sunday and ask him what's up, but he was just dry and told him he and told me he's okay. What just as an end and he heal and teach your men to communicate because this ghosting thing is so childish. You know, it's so interesting that we're having teach your men to communicate and we need this one to move yeah. from a situation. Um, since it leaves one questioning their self-worth, but anyways, guys don't get attached to someone you're not dating 
because vitu zitaenda mrama. Love y'all. Yeah. I feel like she rushed it though. It, also at 18. She got in mm-hmm. head first at 18 you're already picking the one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh they only met in September. Um I feel like yeah, she rushed it. She's already getting jealous. Yeah. Well, the guy is just talking to other people and maybe maybe he's just a worship leader and they're discussing the song list. And plus at 18 you're fresh from high school so you're very impressionable. Mm-hmm. So maybe a 25 24 year old of course looks like all of them there is this pressure to date for marriage date for marriage and while it's good and it's important um at 18 I'm, i don't know what do you think ted it's, it's lucky reminding me of the ocampo situation yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. ocampo has been through a lot <laughs> hey, relationships at church but i definitely think she needs she needs guidance maybe if she has any cousins or relatives or friends who are older maybe a bit older but within the same age range because that age you know you your your there stars in your yeah. eyes you join yeah, you know yeah you've not been shown proper mm-hmm. shege so i think you need to she needs to sit down and really ask herself does she actually like him or is she infatuated with him mm-hmm. yeah at 18 did you ever date somebody for marriage like did you date somebody and you think like oh maybe i'm going to spend the whole my whole life that, that first relationship really at 2012 see, I was around 18 and yeah I was I was in I was like yo this is the you one You wanted to go see was there at 18 huh? Can you imagine <laughs> like what do you know about <laughs> but it was long distance Funnily enough what? she was my mom's best friend's daughter So Messy. but she lives Messy in the US church. so like with me in in someone they come for summer holiday mm. long distance meet. She lived in Seto Yeah she still does Okay But yeah like we'd we'd meet we'd meet on August when they'd come over and it would be so intense and everything mm-hmm. like oh shit this is the one yeah. then she goes and you know like I told you quality time so it kind of starts straining we'll mm-hmm. have like an on off on off then she'll come back it's like oh so it was just uh, <laughs> until <laughs> now I think yeah. did your mom ever find out yeah she knew Oh and also her mom find a funny when her mom you know we had to hide things because her mom like come to you know it was super strict yeah so Uh, yeah she we her mom eventually found out but yeah. i can't remember how yeah yeah okay. then she talked to my mom about it especially when we those are we were going through something yeah. around the time ya kcsc and i was being kind of mean that time was still, yeah in terms of yeah because i was stressed out and everything so i had told that yeah, i mm. need space because i need to study mm. me that i hated studying so i finally got to her mom and her mom asked my mom like ati ted said nani that he wants space because he's studying Okay. So, yeah. so is that how you guys broke up? I think at some point we just realized like it's we we are because of the strain of the distance and just mm. the space I was in mentally yeah. all that so we just said Wi-Fi was not so much available yeah. as well. No, she's an amazing human being. She got engaged actually. I've met them. He's a really nice guy and I'm really happy for her. She's that's that's fam. Mm. Yeah. Congratulations to her. Let me them. Take- <laughs> Let me take you to the next story. Like in what's in the end 2024. Like my life is so good and I'm getting new opportunities. I thank God. Here's the issue now guys. I was in a relationship and situationships are slowly coming back into my life. I am trying to stand on business but the business is standing on me. Where I don't think I can trust myself because I know I'll fold to at least one of them. Mm-hmm. So she's saying she's trying to stand on business everything in her life is thriving and then situationships just come back creeping in her life. <laughs> Ted, can I ask you something? Yes. That sometimes men or We brought the experts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's normally mm-hmm. out there. Mm-hmm. People say when a man wants a girl, mm-hmm. they're going to go straight to the point. Like they will not beat around the bush. That's a good one, yeah. They will not they will not dilly dally. They will not say things like oh I'm trying to find myself. Mm. Do you think situationships are just a subtle way of men trying to either warm up to you or they just don't like you and they don't want to hurt you. They want you to die of a natural death. No, I think situationships Okay, I think there's types of situationships. Mhm. Kunaile you just want to have some fun have a cheeky little thing without too much without commitment just you know there is ile it's kind of a trial period trying to see hey it end up happy and then kunaile it's what was the second one you said the you second said the one was one? No, the first one the first one was um they're trying to warm up to mm-hmm. get to like you so i've said warm up there's warm up 
there is the one where you want to enjoy something without the commitment. And then there's you want the friendship and the company, but you yes, don't want the commitment. You don't want the commitment. And then there's I think there's the friendship one. and commitment. You want the friendship. Like you Okay, there's also the one where you want everything that entails a relationship, but you don't the you don't you, do, you want the cuddling, you want the physical yes, as well. You want the oh. physical, the cuddling, but you don't want the relationship. You're not going okay. for coffee. Yeah. But you don't yeah. want to commit. Yeah. That guy doesn't like that chick. No, not necessarily. You can like her, but maybe you don't. No, no, no. See, I don't it's not. That. You can like someone without wanting to necessarily be in a relationship with them. Oh, when you're a Buddha, when you're a Buddha, when you're a Buddha, when you're No, sometimes you can, you can like someone, but maybe you, maybe you just... Maybe they came into your life at a time when you, you're not ready for a relationship or you're not feeling a relationship or maybe you just feel like you're better off as a situation. So you're saying it's more complex mm. than what, pe- what Ben yeah. was saying that people say that yeah. if you know, you mm. know. So oh, I won't lie though. When you know, uh, you know. And will you be quick so to commit? So he's with me. Or that if you know, you if know. If you know, you know. If you like a chick, And you'll no be quick to commit. Yes. Like when you want to, when you're ready for a relationship uh, and you know. Uh, now you like someone. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll. So that he's one. proving my point. And it's a, Ted, was, Ted, Ted was about to get married at 18 to that chick because he really liked her. And There's so stuff. many messages being thrown but remember in this when I was conversation. 18, I, was, I was also mean in Kwanastas. I'm my just hand. saying for a dude, if you if meet you know, a chick you know. who, who you really like and all that stuff, you don't even care about whatever you guys will eat. You just want to That's true. propose. Now, Nicoliza, is it the same for you? I think for me, yeah. Time may not allow or like mm. the situation. It's like meeting the right person mm. at the wrong time. Mm. So it might not allow. Because I feel like with Ben, it was the same thing. We met. Mm-hmm. There was something, but it didn't work out from the jump. Mm-hmm. We had to go our separate ways and then reconnect later. And when you came, when when I came back later, how was I? Amazing. Straight to the point. Always been. Jagula. Where is your dad now? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, when I grow up, I want to be just like you. <laughs> 45. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like situationships mm. are just subtle ways where one of them doesn't like the other. And so no, not like I for this one, mean. for this lady where situationships are creeping back in her life, mm. Ted, what would you be, what would be your advice to her? So she's trying and she's scared and she's, she doesn't trust herself. Is those situationships, the situationships she was in, did they end in, on a toxic note or did they just fizzle out? Because if they didn't end on a bad note, you can rekindle. You never know. Maybe because you're in different head spaces now, it might blossom into something. Wait, that doesn't uh, look like ask, desperation. Let me ask a really, no. like, it will, sh- like, I'm, I will sound like I'm 50. Uh. But Kwani, situationships are normal. Like, are they normal? These days. Uh. Yeah, these days. Because what will go per commitment? Because it's scary out here. So you just keep someone packing for whatever amount You're of time. You're both keeping each other. Why is everyone assuming one side? So is-, is do you catch feelings if this person has somebody else? So, like, mko wengi kwa situationship? I guess that's the only kitu mna family. Is that something you discuss? So, like, for you, do you discuss that with your, with, like, now, because you, you, you said you're in a situation, do you discuss the boundaries? Cut the mic, cut the with mic. The stu- no, it's, the it's, not, it's not, it's not, it's not <laughs> yeah. in, in, intrusive, but do you discuss boundaries? Like, I would like for you to not see other people. Don't go for coffee. Coffee, like. Maybe, maybe. Ideally, you should. I'll say ideally, you should. Mm. Do I move on ideals all the time? No, Can't maybe not. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Hey, me, I wouldn't survive. I wouldn't survive. <laughs> no, it's crazy out here, by the way. That's hey. why people are so scared of commitment. Because, hey, nikugumu. So, like, situationships are normal. They're like normal. They're the norm. I'd say they're the norm. More right than now. relationships. More than relationships. Bro. Yeah. Hold on to your baby daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you found your... Moral of the story. <laughs> yeah. Aya, let's move on to the other one. Um, Wait, you guys didn't say. Would you? What would you advise? How do you think she should see the... Me, I'm not. I'm not a believer in situationships. I'm actually shocked for you to say that they're normal. Mm. You, I'm like, if you know, if you if you like someone, define it. If you don't, exit. But what if you like several people? You have to settle on Humans one. Humans yeah, can you have to settle. Humans on can one. like her, and they might take time to decide. Hey, me, that's leading people on. Eh? You but is that you one person you have that Amos. connection with? You, there's that one person. There's somebody who ticks off. Um, more boxes. There's someone. True. Unless you're then you you're go for that one and you just stop because you'll always have distraction. That's Especially as a dude. Unless now, you believe in having many partners, but if you're monogamous, 
the thing I will say. Maybe we've always been assuming Ted is monogamy. Do you believe I, in monogamy? Yeah. I believe in monogamy once okay. you are serious. But I will be honest, me, there was a, there was a time I was like juggling. Mm. And that's one of the things I said this year. Mm-hmm. That, that phase I told you I was mm-hmm. going through. And that's one of the things I was said I want to work on. I want to work on. I want to just if I'm if I'm with seeing someone, what take where apple. Let okay. let me see how that goes instead of because yeah, that thing can be tiring as well. So we wouldn't survive. Okay. Mm. Anyway, let's do this. We have two more guys. Hey Ben and Wanjiro, hey, you're not ready for this one. Okay, so hey Ben Wanjiro and Ted. <laughs> mm. Hey, you're not ready for this one. So we've been friends with this girl for three years. Girl? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a guy, I'm assuming. Back in 2022, she saw me talking to my ex and she got mad, but she said it indirectly. So I stopped talking to my ex because she got angry and I didn't want her to feel like I was playing her. And from this, I knew that she loved me. We were not hanging out so, so much because no one wanted to say, I love you. She later joined a certain institution. Sometime we were eating somewhere and she was like, she doesn't have a boyfriend. It's like she was insinuating something. Later in 2023, December, she was acting weird when I was with her, not answering some phone calls, claiming that she did not know the person and then she ignored another one. From this point, I suspected something. Days later, she posted a pic akio nyume subaru and she had told me she's attending a burial. Hapo nikajua kimeni ramba, but I said nothing. Come February this year, I jokingly told her that I wanted to end the relationship and she got mad and I got mixed feelings from this. She told, she called me the next day and she said, and said that she saw it was best for us to end the relationship. Then she asked me, what are we? Long story short, we are still talking, but I'm still confused about the next move or step that I should make, but I love her dearly. So essentially, this guy has been in a situation with this lady from 2022. That's the same thing that I'm talking about. And mm-hmm. she's he's saying that it's like he's been doubting her because he's saying that he saw her, uh, she said she's at a burial, yeah. but later on, he saw her at the... Uh, what do you think, guys? Ted. It's a situation ship for sure, right? I think because they didn't define it and they didn't have the talk about, okay, what are we allowed to do? Mm. Then... You can be mad. You can't really I be mad. You can be mad because you're human and you... you they did define it because... The guy was about to call it off at some point. And the chick got mad. No, that was after she saw the Subaru, Amma. Mm. That was after she saw the Subaru. Mm. It was when they wanted to call it, he wanted to call it off. Before they hadn't defined, I guess that's why she went to Subaru. Then why was she getting mad when he was talking to the ex? Because women are irrational. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> wait. That was Pika. a joke. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Cook him. But he clarified. <laughs> humans, you know, when it comes to feelings, humans are very irrational. So they'll do that. They'll re- It's only after they see that. So many double standards. It's only after. The, yeah, exactly. When we're in love. By the way, people are hypocrites when they're in love. So the, she'll, see, she'll say that, hey, actually, he can do whatever he wants. And then she sees him do whatever he wants, or he sees her do whatever he wants, and, and then, then you get realize, it. Actually, Kunaveni, I'm not yeah. happy with that. So, but that brings the question then of what we were speaking about earlier about boundaries. That mm-hmm. if we're going to be in a situation, then please just clarify what the boundaries are. Are you comfortable with me seeing other people? Mm-hmm. Are you comfortable with me not seeing other people? Because I think if they had defined those boundaries, it mm-hmm. would have been easier. Yes. But already if they've gotten to the level where the chick's getting weird numbers, she says she doesn't know them, she doesn't he doesn't pick, and the guy gets a hunch that maybe this is mm-hmm. she's not being honest. Mm-hmm. This guy just needs to leave her. Either our Kai Chini was what decides us okay, what are we? Mm-hmm. Which is a question. And what we, we are doing to avoid all exiting. <laughs> yeah. That's what we are exiting. But then Ben, would you survive in the situation ship world right now? If like if you were single. I feel like it's always been like this, but this, I, why do I feel okay? Maybe it's in my world. I think it's the terminology, they weren't being called situation chips back mm. then, what, where back you just have multiple call, people call that you are just excuse me, mega rider. Are you guys ready for the last one? <laughs> I met this guy in 2021. It was the first serious relationship for me, but we dated for four months. I never understood whether it was a real relationship or just for pleasure thing. That's why I left. Bila Atakwahiri. A year down the line, never met him. After my birthday, he started texting me, telling me how he loved me. At first, obvious I was not quick to fall into his traps, but after four months, I lost my cousin and this guy was really there for me. So even though, nilirudi kwa your relationship. Tell me why Tumianza could date and I'm 
into him so much. He just relocates. He just relocated to another country for work. I feel so broken. I don't feel like starting the journey of talking stage again. My boy, my boyfriend says he will still be there for long and that I should just get someone. Did he even really love me? So it's long distance that separated them, it seems. It's long distance that they would distance. do. The guy is saying he won't do long distance. Yeah. That's why he's suggesting We break you up? can try other people. Yeah. There are a few sites you can check out people. But we, this can't work. And the chick is saying that if you loved me, did you ever even really love me if even distance can separate us? What's that thing you were saying about living for the moment? Being in the present. Mm. Like just don't put too much pressure on yourself up until a certain stage is when now, like if you've been dating for such a long time is when now you should start thinking, hey, marriage or proposal, things like that. But for now, if it's still fresh, mm. be in the present. Yeah, I think that that was good while it yeah. lasted. Um, it's time for her to... It's painful though. To move on. Honestly, I can say I respect him for that because mm. he was honest. Now, a lot of guys will say, okay, let's do long distance, but wako mm. uko, living, living a single life. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, I respect him for being honest and saying, I don't think we can do long distance because even me personally, long distance, mm. Tricky. never again. Oh, really? Yeah. After the first encounter with your friend? It was just, yeah, it's tough. 18. Me, yeah, 18. Not because they did anything wrong, but just because I know my love languages. That quality, quality time, time is yeah. so important. Yeah. yeah. So what if they come on the weekends? Okay, is, that's different. Are we seeing each other regularly now? Mm-hmm. Because you know, you, for example, it was once a year. Ooh. Like it was August, mm-hmm. then Anna Rudy. August next time, so you know, mm, yeah. So if it's something like that, they are coming every two, one week, maybe two weeks, mm. sour. And we've been dating for long enough. Mm. If it's fresh, fresh, now, nah, hey, you know, mm. Shiro, would you do long distance with you? Yeah, like let's say I got a job at the US Army. I mean, now, now I think we are tired. I mean, I mean, we're, we're, we're a bitch too. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but previously, would you have ever done long distance? Like, if yeah, you, I, uh, I don't think. Like, if I sense there's commitment on both sides, mm. I wouldn't be too averse to it. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm, okay. Just shower me with gifts. <laughs> Plus, and, also, the, and the latest want. and the latest sneakers, <laughs> I'd be happy. Uh, okay. But yeah, I wouldn't be so averse. But now with you, like. Mm. Yeah. I have to make it work. Yeah. But I think also the way he came, you know, guys love to do that thing of they wait for a period in your life, then they come back. And like he came on her birthdays when he said saying, I, I love you. You know, they'll send that happy birthday message, but yeah. it's a it's a hook. It's like so a that, hook. Yeah. So maybe he he wasn't really we'd have to ask him, bring him on the pod. Mm. And we'd see. Yeah. Anyway, all right, that's a wrap on the Joyed Stories, guys. Thank you so much, Ted, for coming. This was lovely. Thank yeah. you yeah. for having me. See, it was not that hot. It, yeah. it wasn't that hot. We wish you the best yeah. in your... <laughs> I, want, I wonder if he'll recognize my voice. And definitely. <laughs> if he'll recognize my voice when he's born. This is actually, this is this, this <laughs> yeah. is the podcast that will also go to the audio, audio streaming platform, yeah. which is Spotify and all that stuff. If you want to send in your Joyed Story, you can go to our YouTube page, which is Joyed Podcast, and there's a link there. You can share your experiences. It's mm-hmm. totally anonymous. We won't know it's who it's from. But Ted, we said if you send yours, we're gonna. You know. won't know. We're gonna know. In fact, I now talk about some previous yeah, ones. Yeah, gonna know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're gonna know. Thank you so much, guys. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. The campus tours are on. Yeah. Uh, this time around, we're doing ZTech, Kenya Methodist University, Meru, Meru. boy. And ZTech is definitely the Riru campus. Yeah. Which other one? We're going to Quea. I think by the time this is showing, we'll have done ZTech. So yes. thank you to everyone who showed up to ZTech. Um, also, now this week, we are going to be in Kemo, Meru. So please, we'll leave a link in the description box. So please be sure to register. And then after Kemo, we'll be down to Quea. Mm. And then we go to USIU, USIU. And then we wrap up uh, at St. Paul's in Limuru. Yes, sir. Now, there's a podcast that we want to come with to USIU. They're yet to confirm to me, but if that comes through, it's going to be very, very heavy. So see you guys. Uh, the registration links are on the description box below. So everything is on the description box. The links to the campuses, the links to the Jared stories, and uh, check, make sure you check out the next episode of Love on the Jared. And Ted's Instagram, soaked to the skin. Soaked, to the soaked yeah. underscore to, to underscore the underscore skin. I was supposed to tell you guys the story of how I got that. Tell name. us. Quick one. Summarize it though. So basically, mm. it was the end of, around end of 2017. Mm-hmm. I was 
in a dark place again. That's a common theme, but I'm very honest about them. Mm. And so I was making a new Instagram because the previous Instagram I had was just for memes and stalking. So then <laughs> I decided Still have to the make, password. No, I forgot the password that time you lost Tisha. And so now I decided to actually have a serious Instagram. And one of my favorite songs is it's called The End Where I Begin by the script. I really love that song. And so one of the parts they say soak to the skin, it's the end where I begin. So I'll just like Hey. Love a boy. Poetic justice. And that's rough. how we wrap up this episode. Thank <laughs> yeah. you guys so much. We will see you in the next one. Bye.